Thank you for joining me today. I'm in Isaiah's, God, uh, Isaiah's prophecy, uh, chapter 40. This is a, the beginning of a wonderful section of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 40 to 48, 49, it really to the end of Isaiah, is a passage of scripture that, that speaks about God's forgiveness and his power and all that he longs to do for his people, Israel. You'll remember that in the previous chapter, uh, we concluded a section where, uh, <clears throat> where the Assyrian king, uh, Sennacherib, had come down against Jerusalem and God provided for them and rescued them and kept them from being delivered there. But later on, the Babylonians came, and because they were not trusting in him at that particular time, uh, the Babylonians did ultimately destroy Jerusalem, and they carried off of uh, the Jewish people into captivity. But in the midst of all of that, the, the Lord gave to Isaiah a promise, and, and in this particular promise, he told Isaiah to comfort the people. Listen to what the words say. Isaiah 40, I'm going to read the first two verses. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, we recognize that, that there were many, many sins that, uh, that Judah did. There were many things that they did that violated God's law, and, and their hearts were turned away from him in significant kinds of ways. But, but when they were sent off into captivity in Babylon, uh, there was a remorse and a repentance that came upon the people and they had a renewed consciousness of their sinfulness and of the idolatry that took them in that way. And so as they returned, the, uh, the word to them was, comfort my people that their warfare is ended, that their iniquity is pardoned, and they have received double for all of their sins. Now, you and I who are on this side of the cross recognize that that same promise is true of us. That same promise is something given to us in this day where we can recognize that despite all of our sinfulness, despite all of our waywardness, our warfare is ended when we put our faith in Messiah. When we turn to the God of Israel, and, and recognize that we have violated his law, that we have failed him, but in true repentance we have turned back to him. He, he, um, he, he declares to us these same words, comfort my people, speak tenderly to them. Their warfare's done, they've received all that they're going to receive for their sins. Now that doesn't mean that we have a license to sin now and, a, and uh, that we have a, 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 just a, a freedom to do whatever we wish. Uh, freedom is probably not the right word, but again, the, the word license is how we should probably cons uh, consider it. And I, and I reject the idea that because we have received that forgiveness, all of a sudden we have no worries about how we behave or anything of that nature. That's, that's a false premise. But nonetheless, if we continue with that attitude of contrition, if we continue recognizing that we're indebted to the cross of Christ, our warfare's ended, our iniquities are pardoned, and he will uh, restore to us uh, the, the, the joy and the peace that comes into our lives and that can come into our lives. And that's what we offer uh, to people around. Not that they, are become, that they become perfect people and not that we become perfect people, but that we offer that forgiveness that only he can provide. 
in Isaiah's time, the repentance that came upon the Jewish people during those years of captivity was that which uh, transformed their lives so that you have people who came out of the captivity like Daniel or Nehemiah or Ezra or Zerubbabel or several of these people. Haggai was another. There are several whose lives we can see and imitate, whose, whose hearts had been transformed largely because their punishment was, fin was finished and they were returning to the God of Israel and the land that he had provided. You and I can return to that God also. And I trust that we will. And I, if, you're in, if you're outside of Christ, if you haven't put your faith in him, I, I urge you, turn to him in true repentance and he will receive you. And he'll declare the same words that he declared through Isaiah, comfort my people, their warfare is ended their iniquities have been pardoned. Father, I ask you to grant to each of us the joy of knowing the forgiveness of sins. Father, we recognize that we're still wayward, we're still flawed people, but we thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit to, uh, to sustain us and to provide for us and to give us that spirit of contrition, of repentance, at the right times. So I pray, Father, for any in this audience who may still be needing to hear that word of pardon. And I ask you, Father, to help them to humbly repent of their sins and turn to the Lord Jesus. Meet them now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day.